Hello everyone and welcome. Today we'll be diving into diabetes mellitus and metabolic syndrome. This presentation is brought to you by Newton TV, so get ready to study smart. Diabetes mellitus is a serious condition affecting millions worldwide. It's characterized by a disorder of carbohydrate metabolism, leading to high blood glucose levels. This can result in increased morbidity and mortality, impacting various organs and systems. We can broadly categorize diabetes into three main types, type 1, type 2, and gestational diabetes. Gestational diabetes develops during pregnancy due to hormonal changes that decrease insulin sensitivity. It's important to note that it affects approximately 4% of pregnancies in the U.S. As you can see from this graph, the prevalence of obesity, diabetes, and metabolic syndrome has been steadily increasing. While type 1 accounts for about 10% of cases, type 2 makes up the vast majority at 90%. This increase in diabetes is closely linked to the rise in obesity and sedentary lifestyles. Let's compare type 1 and type 2 diabetes. Type 1 involves autoimmune destruction of beta cells, leading to no insulin production. Type 2, on the other hand, is characterized by insulin resistance, even though insulin is still being produced, and is often associated with sedentary behavior and obesity. This graph illustrates how glucose and insulin levels change after we eat carbohydrates. Insulin produced by the beta cells in the pancreas helps move glucose from the blood into our cells. This process is called insulin-supported facilitated diffusion. Let's define some key terms related to carbohydrate metabolism. Glucose is used for energy, stored as glycogen, or converted into lipids. Glycogenesis is the formation of glycogen, primarily in the liver and muscle while glycogenolysis is the breakdown of glycogen when blood glucose levels fall. During starvation, our body has mechanisms to maintain blood glucose. Gluconeogenesis converts amino acids and glycerol into glucose. Fatty acids are converted into ketones, which can lead to a fruity odor in breath and, if accumulated, diabetic ketoacidosis, DKA. When glucose intake is insufficient, a cascade of events occurs. Hypoglycemia triggers the liver to break down glycogen. Once glycogen stores are depleted, fat breakdown begins, followed by muscle breakdown if the starvation continues. This diagram illustrates glycogen metabolism and blood glucose homeostasis. Insulin stimulates glucose uptake and glycogenesis, lowering blood glucose. Glucagon stimulates glycogenolysis and gluconeogenesis, raising blood glucose. These processes are tightly regulated to maintain normal blood glucose levels. Normal fasting blood glucose levels are between 70-100 mmHg DL. Hypoglycemia is defined as below 70 mdL, which can impair brain function. Hyperglycemia is above 200 mdL. Impaired glucose tolerance or prediabetes is indicated by a fasting blood glucose between 100 125 mdL. Insulin, our endogenous insulin, plays a crucial role in glucose uptake. It affects muscle, adipose, and liver tissue, promoting glycogenesis and acting as a fat sparer. Conditions like hyperinsulinism and hyperinsulinism hypoglycemia involve increased insulin levels, either to overcome resistance or due to excessive insulin production. This graph shows the relationship between glucagon and blood glucose. Glucagon, produced by alpha cells, is released when blood glucose is low, stimulating glycogenolysis and gluconeogenesis, somatostatin, produced by delta cells, diminishes the secretion of both insulin and glucagon. Glucagon is a vital first aid tool for severe hypoglycemia. It can be administered via injection to quickly raise blood glucose levels in emergency situations. It's important to know how to use it and what to watch out for. 
Here's a visual representation of the roles of insulin, glucagon, and somatostatin in the duodenum and pancreas. Insulin allows glucose entry into cells. Glucagon stimulates hepatic glycogen breakdown and gluconeogenesis. And somatostatin opposes both, regulating the pace of food absorption. Besides insulin and glucagon, other hormones also regulate glucose levels. GI hormones stimulate insulin secretion and may suppress glucagon. Cortisol and epinephrine, produced by the adrenal glands, both increase blood glucose levels. Type 1 diabetes mellitus is characterized by a T-cell-mediated attack on beta cells. This autoimmune process, influenced by genetics, leads to a lack of insulin and the classic signs and symptoms, often presenting as DKA in children. The signs and symptoms of type 1 diabetes include polyuria, polydipsia, polyphagia, weight loss, and fatigue. It often has a rapid onset, requires insulin dependence, and has a peak incidence between 10 and 15 years of age. Type 2 diabetes mellitus is characterized by insulin resistance and increased insulin levels. Patients may experience polyuria, polyphagia, and polydipsia. Metabolic syndrome is a common precursor, and while DKA is less common, hyperosmolar hyperglycemic syndrome, HHS, can occur. Metabolic syndrome is a cluster of conditions that increase the risk of heart disease, stroke, and diabetes. These include high waist circumference, high fasting plasma glucose, high triglycerides, low HDL cholesterol, and high blood pressure. Here are some common symptoms associated with diabetes. These include fatigue, frequent urination, increased hunger and thirst, unexplained weight loss, blurry vision, slow healing wounds, and numbness or tingling in the hands and feet. Gestational diabetes, uh, GDM, occurs during pregnancy due to increased insulin resistance. Women are screened in the second trimester with an oral glucose tolerance test, OGTT. GDM usually resolves after pregnancy but increases the risk of developing type 2 diabetes later in life. Diabetes testing includes fasting and random blood glucose tests, the oral glucose tolerance test, OGTT, and glycated hemoglobin, A1C. A1C measures average blood glucose levels over the past two to three months. Diabetes complications can be both acute and long-term. Acute complications include hypoglycemia, hyperglycemia, DKA, and HHS. Long-term complications include blindness, kidney failure, neuropathy, cardiovascular disease, and amputation. Hypoglycemia, defined as blood glucose less than 70 mg dl, can be caused by excessive insulin, inadequate food intake, or excessive physical activity. Symptoms include headache, sweating, shakiness, hunger, confusion, and dizziness. To address hypoglycemia, have an action plan, consume fast-acting carbohydrates, and avoid fats. IV glucose or glucagon can be administered in severe cases. Repeated episodes can blunt the compensatory response, and autonomic neuropathy may mask warning signs. The Somogi effect is a phenomenon where morning hyperglycemia is present due to insulin therapy causing hypoglycemia during sleep. This triggers compensatory mechanisms that raise blood glucose levels by morning. The dawn phenomenon is another cause of morning hyperglycemia. Growth hormone release during the night decreases peripheral glucose uptake, causing blood glucose levels to rise. Unlike the Somogi effect, nocturnal hypoglycemia does not occur. Here's a comparison of the Dawn phenomenon and Somogi effect. The Dawn phenomenon is caused by normal morning hormone changes, while the Somogi effect is caused by rebound hyperglycemia due to nighttime hypoglycemia. A middle-of-the-night blood sugar check can help differentiate between the two. The three P's of diabetes are polydipsia, polyuria, and polyphagia. Polydipsia is increased thirst due to high blood glucose increasing plasma osmolarity. 
Polyuria is increased urination related to increased thirst and osmotic diuresis. Polyphagia is excessive hunger because glucose isn't utilized effectively. This diagram illustrates the fluid shifts that occur in hyperglycemia. Cells lose water, stimulating the thirst center and leading to polydipsia. Hyperglycemic blood is filtered at the kidney, resulting in polyuria. Electrolyte imbalances can occur in diabetes due to fluid shifts. Blurred vision can result from glucose accumulation in the lens. Hyponatremia and false hyperkalemia can also occur due to these shifts. Fat and muscle wasting are common in diabetes. This is due to the body breaking down fat and muscle for energy, leading to weight loss despite increased appetite. Elevated ketone levels, glycogenolysis, and gluconeogenesis further increase blood glucose. In diabetes, glucose doesn't enter cells effectively, leading to hyperglycemia and cell starvation. This stimulates the liver to break down glycogen and initiate gluconeogenesis. Fatty acids are converted to ketones, resulting in a bloodstream containing both glucose and ketones. Diabetic ketoacidosis, DKA, occurs when insulin is lacking, leading to ketone formation. Ketones are strong acids that alter blood pH and cause metabolic acidosis. DKA is more common in type 1 diabetes. DKA is characterized by specific respiratory patterns, including Cosmol's respirations and fruity acetone breath. Diagnostic criteria include high blood glucose, low pH and bicarbonate levels, and the presence of ketones in the urine and blood. DKA management involves evaluating blood glucose and performing urinalysis. Cardiac monitoring, fluid replacement, insulin administration, and potassium supplementation are also crucial. DKA can have life-threatening consequences, including cerebral edema. Early recognition of signs and symptoms is essential for prompt treatment. Hyperosmolar, hyperglycemic syndrome. HHS, also known as HHNK, is more common in type 2 diabetes. Ketones are not present as some insulin is still available. Blood glucose is very high and there is increased plasma osmolarity. HHS develops due to hyperglycemia, which leads to hyperosmolarity and osmotic diuresis. This can develop insidiously over days to weeks. Symptoms of HHS include weakness, poor tissue turgor, tachycardia, and confusion. In severe cases, patients may present in a coma. Causes include infection, non-compliance with diabetes management, substance abuse, and coexisting diseases. HHS treatment involves IV rehydration and insulin. Fluids should be given first to prevent worsening hypotension. Electrolyte replacement may also be needed. Here's a comparison of DKA and HHS. DKA is caused by absolute insulin deficiency, while HHS is caused by relative insulin deficiency. DKA develops over hours to days, while HHS develops over days to weeks. HHS has a higher mortality rate than DKA. Long-term complications of diabetes include arteriosclerosis, peripheral angiopathy, diabetic retinopathy, diabetic neuropathy, diabetic nephropathy, poor wound healing, and immunosuppression. These can affect various organs and systems throughout the body. Chronic hyperglycemia damages small and large arterial vessels, leading to angiopathy and downstream end organ damage. Poor wound healing is also a common complication due to reduced white blood cell function and macrovascular angiopathy. Diabetic foot is a serious complication caused by reduced blood flow and nerve damage. Symptoms include ulcers, bunions, ingrown toenails, callus, and dry, cracked skin. Acute cardiac events are more likely in diabetes patients. Increased risk of atherosclerosis in both large and small arteries. Vascular damage occurs due to hyperglycemia leading to oxidative stress. Gangrene wounds are a severe complication of diabetes characterized by ulcers, foul-smelling discharge, and discoloration. It's often associated with poor circulation and nerve damage. 
Peripheral neuropathy involves damage to the nerves, leading to demyelination and axonal atrophy. Symptoms include burning, tingling, and blunted pain sensation. Motor weakness and gait abnormalities can also occur. Autonomic neuropathy can affect various bodily functions. Men with diabetes are more likely to experience erectile dysfunction. Other effects include cardiac system issues, GI problems, bladder problems, and decreased sweating. Infection risk is increased in diabetes due to decreased white blood cell function. Candida infections are common, and high glucose levels can change the pH of the vagina, allowing candida to proliferate. Diabetic foot complications are the most common cause of non-traumatic lower extremity amputation. This is due to peripheral neuropathy, poor circulation, and a suppressed immune response. Osteomyelitis, or bone infection, can also occur. Diabetes is a leading cause of blindness in adults. Retinal circulatory damage due to high blood glucose can lead to microaneurysms, macular edema, and proliferative retinopathy. Regular ophthalmological examinations are critical. Nephropathy or kidney damage can lead to renal failure. Damage to the glomerular capillary and microalbuminuria are early signs. Activation of the RAS with renal dysfunction compounds the problem. Skin conditions are common in diabetes. These include prolonged wound healing, diabetic skin spots, acanthosis nigricans, and lipoatrophy at insulin injection sites. Mental health is significantly impacted by diabetes. Depression is twice as common in those with diabetes. Psychological insulin resistance or refusal to comply with insulin management can also occur. Young women with type 1 diabetes are at risk for eating disorders. Insulin purging or restricting insulin usage to stimulate lipolysis and weight loss is a dangerous practice. Suspect eating disorders in patients with recurrent DKA or chronically poor glycemic control. The goal of all diabetes treatment is glycemic control. Better control is related to a decreased risk of long-term complications. Major indices to guide and evaluate treatment efficacy include A1C level, fasting blood glucose level, and postprandial blood glucose level. Hospitalization can alter a patient's glycemic control due to stress and critical illnesses. Less stringent guidelines may be followed, with the main goal being to prevent hypoglycemia and hyperglycemia. Lifestyle management is crucial for diabetes. Maintain ideal body weight, consult a diabetic educator, and follow a diet with low glycemic index carbohydrates. Daily exercise is important for glucose uptake and blood vessel growth. To reduce CVD risk, aim for blood pressure less than 130 80 mHg, LDL cholesterol less than 100 mDL, HDL cholesterol greater than 60 mDL, and triglycerides less than 150 mDL. Aspirin therapy, BMI less than 25, cessation of smoking and regular exercise are also important. Thank you for watching this presentation on diabetes mellitus and metabolic syndrome. Please subscribe, like, and share this video to help others study smart with Newton TV.